frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Don't you understand, George? It's because you were not born. Film church. Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. But even if you think you know someone well, even if you love that person deeply, you can't completely look into that person's heart. You'll just feel hurt. Hello, and welcome to Film Church Radio, the podcast that treats cinema as a religion. It's Sunday. I'm Lewis. And I'm Brandon. And we are here to talk about movies. Each week, Brandon and I alternate picking a film for us both to watch and discuss. Today, I tricked Brandon into picking the film from 2021, <laughs> Drive My Car, directed by Ryosuke Hamaguchi. Um, but before we get into the main film, we would like to thank everyone who has been listening to the podcast and sending their love for the show. It's great to kind of to see it build in week over week and see more people flock into the congregation um it kind of makes it worth it you know we love doing this but and the fact that anybody's listening at all is just a massive plus so thank you all for for chiming in listening sending us messages we really really appreciate it um as we say every week you can find us all on social media platforms at film church radio um go leave us a comment send us a message about the show and we like i said we love to hear from everybody so um get involved we're going to be here 24 7 pretty much so Hit us up. Do it. Um, before we jump into the main meat of the episode, which will be Drive My Car, we're going to do some quick reviews, which is where we talk about what we've been watching other than Drive My Car this week. Um, and this is going to, I think, this week may take a little longer than normal. Um, as we've been teasing for quite a while now, next week is going to be our Oscar special, where we talk about the films that have been nominated um, and as we both this week, I think, watched a few films that have only been nominated in like one category, um, I think we'll spend a little bit more time talking about those films um, because we probably won't talk about them too much other than, you know, Best Actress next week. Um, so when we get to them, so there may be spoilers ahead for The Eyes of Tammy Faye and Spencer. Um, both are streaming online. One, I think Tam Tammy Faye is HBO and Spencer's Hulu. Um so yeah i think so yeah so just buckle up um but hopefully it won't be too spoiler heavy just more of our reaction to it um yeah exactly yeah brandon what have you been watching this week hit me up brother <laughs> well <laughs> as you know we have both we both went and saw the evil dead we sure did on the big screen baby that's right at alamo draft house they're showing all three so we still got two more to go they're showing them that's once right. a week um, and that's the first time I've ever seen Evil Dead on the big screen. I mean, it's, uh, it's a great movie. Like, I love that movie, you know? Yeah. Um, and watching it on the big screen was a lot of fun, you know, with friends and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't necessarily notice anything new cause I've seen it quite a bit, you know, but it was yeah. a lot of fun, fun watching it. Um, I always... And blown away just by the cinematography. I mean, it's a very low budget horror movie, but they do some really great shots in the movie. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean the famous the famous ones are like the, you know, the you know, the evil dead spirit like going through the woods and you know, the it's like the POV of the spirit and the camera's yeah. like on a board or something and they're carrying it through the woods. You know, that that stuff's always great, but like the shot whenever they're first pulling up to the cabin and the camera is like I, i'm sure it's like rigged on a truck or another vehicle and it you know the the car comes in the frame and then the camera just follows behind the car like for how old that movie yeah. is um like such a great creative shot and then the shots like in the cellar when they're like looking down in the cellar and the the camera is down in the sh cellar looking up at them yeah it's so great um but yeah it was a really good time yeah dude there was two shots that um both like in the cellar that really blew me away the first one was when ash first goes down looking for the other guy i forget his name um and it kind of starts on ash and then it does like a 360 mm -hmm. and then comes back but ash is like closer to the camera somehow yeah um, 
Uh, that was really good. I like that shot a lot. And then yeah. the second one is um, when it's just Ash on his own and he's coming back up the stairs and the camera is like underneath the stairs and it's like uh-huh. tracking back as he climbs up. I just thought that was really, you know, clever. I don't, I haven't seen many shots like that before. Yeah. Um, and it takes what could have been, I mean, the premise for the film is just like a, a typical kind of B horror movie, right? Yeah. Um, but that direction and like the attention to detail just elevates it. You can just tell when you're watching it, like this is the work of someone who's knows what they're doing and is in control. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really the thing that makes it stand out. I think, I mean the acting too. I mean, Bruce Campbell is like so great. <laughs> yeah. he is, <laughs> And yeah. it gets better and better as the movies go on, but you know, he was just put through hell. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. the making of that movie. Uh, and all of them were, I guess, but him him the most so, I think. Yeah. Um just, you know, especially towards the end and just like the amount of stuff they're just throwing at him. Yeah. And... <laughs> yeah, cuz we said when we came out like you think like that you've got to a point where you're like it can't get any more bloody, it can't get, like it can't kind of keep get up weirder you or Yeah, and it does. Yeah. And it yeah. just keeps going. <laughs> yeah yeah it's great i'm really excited about the next one um and and the third one because i feel like the third one is um like my least favorite and so yeah. i'm excited to see it on the big screen and see if it uh i mean it it's still i still love the movie but but it's just you know my least favorite of the three yeah. so i'm excited to see if seeing it on the big screen does anything for it you know yeah yeah for sure um, but yeah, so we watched that and then we watched, uh, Spencer the other night, my girlfriend and I, Yeah. um, and I really liked it a lot. Like I thought it was really well made. Um, yeah. again, like it's like shot on 16 millimeter film, which is like, I like, I love the look of that. Like every time I see it, I'm like. I bet this is 16 and I look it up and it is. Yeah. Um, which Evil Dead was as well, by the way. Oh, cool. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm not like, I, you know, as far as the history of of uh, Princess Diana and, yeah, you know, just like English history and the history of the queen. And I, I don't know that much, you know, about that world. Yeah. Um, but still found the movie very enjoyable. Um, Sarah had to remind me kind of what happened to Princess Diana and stuff. I mean, I knew she had yeah. like died in a car crash and stuff, but I didn't really know that she was like kind of this rebellious person. Yeah. A- and um, yeah, I liked the movie a lot, you know, to the point where I was like, why, why? And I've been saying this as we go through these Oscar movies, uh, it, and I'm sure I'll say it again next week. Why is, you know, this not nominated for Best Picture? Yeah. Right. But, uh, like, Drive My Car is. Yeah. You know, or, mm-hmm. you know, all the other movies that are nominated for Best Picture. Why are they up there? And these other movies that are in these yeah. other categories not. Because yeah. I don't get it. You know, it's a weird year. Yeah, it is a weird year. Yeah. But... Um, but you saw Spencer, right? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I'm a big fan of Kristen Stewart. I think the career at the moment is really interesting, especially the project she picks. And she did a really good job at bringing this character to life. Um, one that I think a lot of people think they know a lot about, but still yeah. kind of putting a new spin on it. Um, and I really like the kind of the way they went with this film. Um, Cause it's not necessarily like based on fact. It says at the beginning, it's, like a fantasy based on real events or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of like, I don't know. It manages to tell a lot about her in a very interesting way. I feel like, um, yeah. And I really like the kind of ghost story elements and like, you know, history kind of surrounding her, but her being completely isolated. Um, and I think it did a good job of not necessarily painting the Royal family as like the worst people in the world. You know, they were, they're locked in tradition, you know, and yeah. that's kind of what I got. Um, the one interaction she has with the queen, she's a little bit 
like brisk, but she's still encouraging. You know, she's not like horrible to her. Yeah. Um, I thought they did. I thought it was excellent. Like really good. <laughs> yeah, because they don't even necessarily. I mean, they they very could it very easily could have made uh you know the queen and um and uh Charles yeah Charles um they could have made them like the villains yeah of the story but they don't really lean into it too much I mean they kind of hint that maybe I mean they're they're having people watch her but then they're not you know they're not really forcing her to do anything no they're just kind of like time to go let's go come on yeah and um yeah it's more of just like this psychological breakdown of you know what she's going through and yeah sometimes you don't know what's real and what's not real um which i liked a lot and yeah it was very i mean it was just it was just fun to watch it was like it was a very it was very much an actor's movie yeah you know yeah for her um you know it was a really good role for her to do and really she makes it really interesting you know what i mean just her performance and stuff um, yeah for sure and uh yeah so so it's i guess you know what you're saying is it's not uh i don't know what the story is i guess that people know you know so i yeah. guess it's not exactly super accurate but i mean um yeah, I like where they went with it. Me too. Yeah, it was great. And it looked beautiful. It did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so after that, uh we watched Napoleon Dynamite last night. We just oh, kind of yeah. threw it on. And yeah. I didn't actually expect to end up watching all of it, but we haven't watched it in a long time and um yeah, we stayed up kinda late watching it and it's just so great. I mean it's just yeah. such a classic. Like I can't believe it's been what like fifteen almost well, I guess in a couple of years it'll be twenty years, yeah, crazy, yeah, it's kind of wild, um yeah, I mean, if you haven't seen Napoleon Dynamite, you gotta see it it's yeah. it's <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's in the Library of Congress, but I'm sure it will be at some point, yeah, I feel like it's a film of our generation. Yeah, you know, it for came sure. out at yeah. that point where cinema was just getting like really interesting, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I didn't realize like that Napoleon Dynamite actually premiered at Sundance. Did it really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which is cool. Like that that must have been crazy. I yeah. mean to to go I mean to if you you know as an audience member just to see that at Sundance and then and see what it became but also just for the filmmakers too yeah you know to yeah. go to that festival see it do well and then just see it become this like huge cultural phenomenon yeah Must that's have been crazy mind blowing yeah like they probably just thought it was something nobody would watch and then yeah everyone on the planet is quoting it nonstop <laughs> there's t-shirts everywhere <laughs> yeah yeah. Insane. Um, but yeah, and then I mean that's that's it for me this week, man. Um, yeah, I, I've not been as good as you catching up on all these Oscar movies, but I'm gonna yeah um, hopefully get a lot more in. It's been a slog. Yeah, I I I see the pain in your eyes <laughs> trying to get through these Oscar movies. Yeah, I've kind of I've kind of given up now. I think there's 53 films nominated, and I've seen 39. Wow, so I'm at that that's point a lot. Now. It is a lot. So I'm yeah. at that point now where I'm like, okay, I feel like I have enough of a grasp to kind of have informed decisions at least. Um, yeah. So I watched a lot of the films this week. Um, Spencer, West Side Story, Tick, Tick, Boom, Cyrano, Coda, um, Isa Tabby Faye, you know, um, which we'll talk about majority of them next week, I think. Um, and we'll talk about Isaac Tabitha in just a minute. Um, we watched The Adam Project on Netflix um, with Ryan Reynolds and um, Mark Ruffalo. And it was good. We enjoyed it. It's like a good family, like, time travel romp, you know. Um, yeah, is that like, uh, what's that movie? The Kid or something with um, Bruce, Bruce Willis, Willis where he's like, 
where he's got like his younger self. He's hanging out with his younger self. Yeah, yeah. It's got like touches of that. Uh, there's touches of like Back to the Future, um, ET. Uh-huh. You know, like oh, a lot cool. of these kind of um, coming of age films for like younger younger boys, I guess. Yeah. Um, and like saying that, it was still original enough to be interesting. Yeah. So any film that is like an original premise, I'm excited for because I'm just like, it's not a sequel, it's not a prequel, it's not a remake. You know, this yeah. is kind of like an original idea. Um, and it was a lot of fun, you know. Sweet. Just Ryan Reynolds doing what he does best. Uh, some really funny laugh out loud moments. Um, and it's on Netflix. So can't go wrong. Sweet. Um, cool, man. Then we watched Evil Dead. And then... Uh, me and my wife watched Avengers Endgame. Um, been a while since we'd watched it. So yeah. went back and it's still pretty amazing. Yeah. So it, you know, I just, every time I Did watch it. Did you cry no. again? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but every time I watch it, I'm just like, I don't know how they can top this. I don't know where they're going to go. Yeah. Because this is so in- incredible. You know, this is what 20 yeah, I, six films came to yeah. this point well they're they're gonna have to build build up their cast of characters again yeah you know because the reason it's so good is because there's so much weight in all these characters i mean that moment when um captain america gets the hammer oh my god you know and and he says avengers assemble and all that stuff like they're gonna have to I mean, it only means something because of how long we've spent with this character, you know. So we're going to have to spend some time with some of these new characters that they introduce and stuff um, for a while, I think. Yeah. You know? But yeah, I don't know where they could go either. No, but I am excited to see. Yeah. So and we've got a lot coming up within the next, what, three months, I think? Yeah. We've got like Doctor Strange... Moon Knight, Other Miss stuff. Marvel. Moon Knight, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's coming. Yeah. Getting back Mobius. into it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, me, Morbius. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to be very interesting to as we both watched Nosferatu pretty recently. Yeah. To yeah. go and watch that and just be like, oh my. I mean, I'm, I'm, like, I'm judging the film before I've seen it, so yeah um, i mean you know they at least with the sony verse they're they're typecasting well i yeah. think yeah you know and that madam web film looks really interesting so yeah it does yeah yeah i'm excited that they're doing that i've been wanting to see madam web on the big screen yeah for a while yeah i really really hope that black cat comes into it soon she's one of my favorites yeah, yeah, yeah. she's you know she's Catwoman. <laughs> in Marvel, yeah. but it's yeah. still, you know, a good kind of um talent tech with Spider Man, which I enjoy. So Yeah, and I mean if this ends up being the Andrew Garfield universe for the the Sony movies for um Morbius and Venom and stuff, um in the Andrew Garfield in the first or the second? No, I think the second one, uh Felicia Hardy is in it. Is she really? Yeah. And it's, um, I can't think of her name, but the girl from Rogue One. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, so, I'd be you know, that. if they do connect it, maybe maybe that'll happen. Yeah, but that'd be great. <laughs> we just went on a Spider-Verse tangent, yeah, and again, we don't even yeah. have it on our list. <laughs> uh, we just but have to obviously, mention Webhead, and then there we go. <laughs> yeah, we're off. So we might end up reviewing... Uh, Morbius, we gotta, we gotta discuss. Yeah, you know, if the if there's a demand out there, you know, let us yeah, know exactly. if you guys want us to talk about Morbius in the Spider Verse. Yeah, stuff. Please, you know. Yeah, um, and then, and then I got back to kind of I've been watching a lot of films from like the early seventies Hollywood films. So I watched What's Up Doc, um, a Peter Bogdanovich like um, comedy. Um, it's very, it's very in the vein of, you know, um, the screwball comedies of like the thirties and forties, um, with Barbara Streisand and it's just, it's so funny. I, I had a really good time with it. It's like an hour and a half long. 
Um, just one of those films where it just kind of escalates and escalates um, and a really good car chase at the end. Um, yeah, I feel like we've talked about this movie before, but I don't think I've ever seen it. Yeah, it's it's really good. And it's on, is it on HBO Max, I think? That's how I watched it. Um, okay. But yeah, it's it's really good. It like surprised me how good it was. Um, yeah. And then I watched Bonnie and Clyde because I was in the mood for some. Oh, nice. Bonnie and Clyde. So yeah. I hadn't watched it for a few years. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's Bonnie and Clyde. You've, it seen, kind of, you've seen it before? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it started just, I mean, it's the film that changed everything, right? Like that started the ball rolling. So yeah, like, yeah, with violence and like, you know, like pushing the boundaries of what was allowed in cinema before. And, yeah. And, and also like a movie about villains. Yeah. You know, that and we you had empathize and, with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like that movie more and more every time I watch it. Yeah. It's really, it's really good. At the end, it's um, still very like, shocking you know you see yeah. a lot of those bullets go in not mm -hmm. not literally because they would have killed the actors but you know you kind of the reaction to it and everything it's pretty intense yeah um so let's talk about the eyes of tammy faye yeah i know you've seen it too so mm -hmm. best actress nominee jessica chastain as tammy mm -hmm. faye um I feel like if you're all already down on religion, this is not the best film to watch. Yeah, if you're, if you like, if you think there's corruption in the church, I should oh, say, right. not yeah. down on religion, but you know, not necessarily sure where the money goes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It, I mean, it brings to light, you know, some of yeah, some of the inner workings of of. Uh, you know, Christian, uh, I don't know what I would even call them, like Christian celebrities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, cr Christian personalities, you know, people who have made a career off of kind of uh, God and, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and, and getting money donated to them to, uh, you know, that's supposed to be for, you know, a good cause, and then they end up buying fur coats <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and uh and then yeah and then it also is just it, it kind of you know the, some of the characters in this movie i mean all the characters are real people i mean based yeah. on real yeah. people right so it's like and this is it kind of takes place in the i guess 80s mostly um in a time where uh like the the Christian movement was getting a lot of traction, you know. There was the the whole conservative movement was getting a lot of traction. Um, Ronald Reagan, yeah. you know, became president and was pushing the conservative Christian stuff, right? That's right. Yeah, if yeah I know I my history right. Uh -huh. um, and um, I didn't know much about Tammy Faye. The only person that I had heard of before this movie came out as far as the characters go was uh Jerry Falwell. Okay. Who started, I guess, Liberty University and and then his son uh continued on running the university until like a bunch of scandals came out a few years okay. ago. He did a bunch of <laughs> crazy uh stuff and um they kicked him out. Um and Liberty University is like known as just a very um, non-inclusive school. Okay, I guess I could say. Yeah, good uh, way to put it. And uh, you know, so yeah, I knew who Jerry Falwell was, and um, so I was kind of interested. Like, what is this movie about? Like, yeah. Um, and uh yeah i liked it a lot like it 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 really um you know if i had known anything about tammy faye before this movie i probably wouldn't think the greatest of her yeah you know but like watching this movie um i really it really feels like she you know whether or not she you agree that she did the right thing or not i think she believed she was doing the right thing you know yeah um 
And yeah, she's she kind of disappears in the role. Yeah, she's yeah, she's really she great in the movie. Yeah. Um, as well as Andrew Garfield, like he's just so charming yeah. and everything, you know. Um, yeah, I liked them both a lot. Um, what do you think? Um, I don't think I was as warm on it as it sounds like you were. I, I just it just falls into this like biopic trope, you know, straight from uh-huh. the office. Like, here's her as a young girl. Here's her beating this guy and then they get famous and then the fall and then the at the end is like yeah. oh redemption you know um but i thought that the, the the main performances were really really good vincent d'onofrio as well oh like, yeah when you talk about disappearing into the role he was he was wonderful um yeah but yeah i just you know the the little bits i liked were her talking to the aids patient um and like her doing all the work, like for inclusivity, you know. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't necessarily there at the forefront all the time. That seemed to just be like vignettes between the main action, you know. Yeah, because so, yeah, it, it's like those those moments. It it kind of shows how she was kind of. Um, you know whether you believe in Christianity or not. She was, yeah. she was, she was somebody within that world that was um, trying to make it more inclusive. Make it, yeah. you know, t- like take those parts. It's like, you know, that you had all the well, and she's like a woman too. So it's yeah. like you know this this organization being led by men, being controlled by men, and you know they're not okay with um, anyone who doesn't fall in line with, you know, the typical like household structure. Yeah. Yeah. And she's out here going, well, God says to love everybody. Yeah. You know, she's trying to at least um, help people, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So she's a, yeah, at least trying to do good. Um, But yeah, I mean, it, I I do kind of wish that it had gone more into, some of the darker stuff because i mean like i mean jerry falwell in the movie you know played by vincent d'onofrio comes across as a very dark character but then they don't really go into it more you know what i mean and i think as at least as far as like bringing awareness to like some of the dark darker things you know within the the big money mega church uh christian organizations would have brought you know would have at least maybe brought more awareness i don't know but yeah um you know maybe maybe toning it down the way they did will make people who were fans of tammy faye like yeah. appreciate it more i don't know um because i mean it's i mean it's a movie for a different generation though you know what i mean it's like yeah it's it's kind of for the people that that knew Tammy Faye as a TV personality back in the eighties, you know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Like um, you're aware of who she was. You knew that she wore a lot of makeup and you know, yeah. very glamorous. Um, yeah. But not necessarily like her life. Yeah. I think, you know, but like I said, I think that especially after watching Spencer, that is a biopic kind of thing in the same way, but it's like, it just chooses to focus on just a weekend and like changes it a little bit. Um, same with I, Tonya from a few years ago. You yeah. Know, that's the same kind of thing. And like, as soon as it started, I was like, okay, it's just gonna, you know, we're just doing paint by numbers really. Yeah. Um, and I just couldn't get over the fact that they, what they did to Andrew Garfield's cheeks. <laughs> like, I don't like the yeah. makeup to like, and I know that that's the character. So they're trying to make, it's like, okay. Like it was just, it looked they're like trying he was to starting. make him look older. Yeah, and he he just looked like he was storing nuts for winter. So <laughs> I just, I, it just every time it took me out, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, sometimes we don't need like the char- the actor can like embody the character, you know. Um, yeah, and like you said, yeah. I don't know whether that was for people that were already familiar with him, that were like, oh, he kind of looks like him, I guess. But for me, I was like, I don't like, I don't really know who this guy is. I don't really need 
him to look need to screen go that accurate. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. Even with the, uh, <laughs> even with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm just laughing about the, the storing up nuts for winter because I was gonna say even with the nuts in his cheeks, like he still doesn't look that much like the character. No, anyway, exactly. Yeah, I mean exactly. the person is like I don't yeah. know what that did for him. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I. It, it was good. Like it wasn't, yeah. um, you know, it's good for the characters, like, like yeah. the performances, and that's yeah. about it, you know, yeah. for me anyway. But, um, but yeah, like I said, I think it, I think it's just targeted towards a different audience. You know, it started targeted towards an older audience, and you know, they probably, you know, the I, I'm uh, making some assumptions here, but I would assume that producers and filmmakers when they're targeting towards an older audience, they're like, just keep it simple. Keep it like, yeah. just do the same structure that we always do. You know, whereas like Spencer is, can be targeted towards a younger audience yeah. Yeah. and they, you know, they try to do something more interesting or progressive with the filmmaking yeah. and storytelling, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I think an older audience would, would enjoy that just fine. Like, yeah. I think they, no, I think they don't true. give them the benefit of the doubt, you know? Yeah. Um, they're just worried about what it says works on paper, you know? Yeah. And they made Tammy seem so naive. You know, she was apparently like oblivious to all this that was going on, even though she lived yeah. in a mansion and bought furs and, you know, and I was like, I don't know if that rings true. I don't know how oblivious she can be. Yeah. To it all. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe she was, I don't know, but, I was like, well, I, I think sometimes people um, are in denial, and so yeah. it makes it come off yeah. as they're oblivious, but they're just, you know, they know and the whole thing. Up. You know, if oh God wants us to do this, you know, maybe the naivety related to that. I'm trying to be very careful here in terms of like, <laughs> you know, believing that this is what God intended, kind of makes you yeah. turn a blind eye to a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Well, it it does. I mean, and yeah. and take and takes away some of the responsibility. I think. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, I I think it's worth checking out for anybody that wants to see it. And I mean, I think she she, you know, we're, we'll talk about who we think is going to win next week. But I mean, I think she deserves to be nominated. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it was a very good performance. Like you come away remembering her. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, what I think that's it on our yeah on our quick review stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know it was a bit week. longer and longer. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we get into this movie, drive my car that we're talking about this week. Um, I I have a feeling that. Neither one of us particularly loved this movie. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, and so if you're listening to us for the first time, you know, usually we um, kind of dive deep into the film that we picked for the week. Um, and I don't know exactly where this conversation is going to go or how long it's going to last. But just, you know, I would say if if you don't love this episode check us out in another episode yeah. and, and, you know, give us another chance because <laughs> we might not have too much good to say about this movie, which I know that a lot of people do like this movie. Yeah. Um, I think maybe just for me and Lewis, it just didn't hit right, you know, yeah. and it, mm -hmm. it might need another rewatch, but you know, we haven't really had a chance. We ended up picking this movie mainly because we're, we're going to do an Oscar special. So we decided to pick one this week that was, that we both needed to watch. Um, before the Oscars next week. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, the kind of the point of film church radio for us is to uh, learn and, and grow in our taste in film. And, you know, sometimes we're just not going to love everything we see. Yeah. And, we, and, and we need to dissect it to figure out what, it, you know, why we don't like it. Yeah. And if you loved every single film that you saw, 
you could be objective. Yeah. We, I mean, yeah. we wouldn't have a podcast. We'd just be like, yeah, that was great. You know? Um, exactly. And the point of watching as many films as me and Brandon do is you find films that you don't like and that just influences your taste, you know? You yeah. just kind of, it just like draws you to things that you think you will like and discover. I mean, I'm glad I've seen it. You know, yeah. I'm glad that I can say, oh, I've watched it. I can like, you know, we can talk about it. Um, but yeah, it's um, it, it's not one of my favorites from this year. Yeah. I'll say that before we get into it. So the IMDb summary of Drive My Car from last year is a renowned, sorry, a renowned stage actor and director learns to cope with his wife's unexpected passing when he receives an offer to direct a production of Uncle Vanya in Hiroshima. Um. Before we talk about much else, this film is three hours long. <laughs> um, three three yeah. hours basically to kind of to explore this um, theme of like death and kind of dealing with it. Um, I honestly thought that you know the longer we got into it, the more story would unravel. Um, and honestly, it doesn't. Like what like that is the whole point of the film. It's just two people dealing with unexpected deaths. Yeah. Um, and I know that I said last week that I'm a big fan of watching like, like people deal with grief and kind of like not cutting away and like overlooking it, I guess. Um, and I couldn't help but think of the souvenir part two and how well that's handled. Yeah. You know, I just feel like, this was very bloated for the story it was trying to tell. Yeah. Well, it made more sense to me once I found out that it was based on a short story. I'm like, oh, this could have been a short film. Because yeah. literally I had that thought when I finished the movie. I was like, oh, like, I was trying to figure out why, you know, it wasn't working for me. And I was like, I mean, there's not a ton of story there. Like, literally, yeah. it is bloated. Like, they could have cut it down to, like, a few minutes, like, ten minutes maybe. And had everything that was good about it still there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe that's an over-exaggeration, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of, you know, staying there too, you know, staying yeah. like seeing, seeing the emotion, seeing what's seeing what subtext is there within the frame that you didn't, that you wouldn't quite get if you cut away too soon. Um, but there's not really any subtext in like a car, slowly pulling into a parking garage finding a parking space parking the person getting out of the car walking into like they it's like yeah. so many things like that where it's like why is this in here yeah. like literally why are we watching this car yeah but i mean and it's not it's not i'm i'm not talking about the parts where he's riding in the car with the other uh main character yeah. um where there are some moments i'm talking about other scenes that just drag on for no yeah. reason it's like you like very easily this movie could have been two hours for sure yeah if you just 100%. cut some of that stuff out but then if you start trimming a little more you probably could have got it down to an hour yeah a hundred percent yeah i mean the whole opening 40 minutes like i was thinking earlier we don't de like i don't feel like i need that at all yeah, the opening, like, like, yeah, like literally, we, we'd... Yeah, if we'd never met the wife, it wouldn't take anything away from the rest of the film. Yeah. Because they talk about what happened, like, yeah. later on, you know, and it's like, I know I've seen it, even if it's flashback, even if it's just, like, he's talking to the guy in the back of the car, and he has a flashback of coming back inside and seeing them together, like, that would have worked a lot better um, cinematically for me. I would have been like, oh, my God, you know? Whereas now I'm like I'm just, it left me very like all there was no revelations. There was nothing that, like you know, I sat up in my seat and I was like, oh my gosh, um, all of it seemed very placid. There was no ripples in that water. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, and I feel like there might be someone out there who would make the argument that, um, <clears throat> well, it's more like real life. You know, yeah, life, that's fine. life, life, real life is a little bland. It's a little boring. There's these yeah. moments where no one's around and you're getting out of your car and you're walking into a building and it's not cinematic. And, and I'm, you know, what I would say to that is 
yeah, I'm not here to watch real life. I'm here to watch a movie. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm here to be entertained. Like, it's not real life. It's a movie. That's yeah. why, you know, I'm here. Yeah. And, and there's films it, that are a slice of life that are really entertaining. Yeah. Um, but I don't think this was one of them, unfortunately. Yeah. And it, there could be more, you know, it's like the the cool thing about cinema is that it can change like a film can can still be the same film yeah but as you change and grow as a human you can go back to a film and it's it hits completely different yeah you know and you know this might be one of those films that does that i don't know like i would be really surprised if this one best best picture Our but best if it international film uh, yeah best international right. film uh if it wins best picture i probably We'll watch it again in a few years. Yeah. But if, if it doesn't win, I I probably won't ever watch it again. Yeah. I just can't um, believe that um, the worst person in the world, um, which I absolutely loved, was chosen over this for best picture. To me, that was so much more like life affirming and like enjoyable. Yeah. Than, I mean... To say that like two characters die and we like follow two people like dealing with it, I never feel like these characters like are at a point where they're like they can't they're plagued by this, you know. Like yeah. the main character, um Hidetoshi Nishijimi, um like he just he just looks sad the whole time. Like even when he was with his wife he looked sad. You know, I don't yeah. I don't think that his character developed at all. Um, yeah, and there's a point in the film where they're rehearsing the play, and he's telling everyone like, "I want you to just speak like robots, basically." And I was yeah. like, "Okay, I get it now. This film is not working for me because all of these characters have no emotion. Like they have conversations, um, and the only emotion we see really is in the eyes. Like I, I can't remember like even um, when the young actor goes off and kills the photographer. Yeah, we don't see it. Like all that kind of." Like the the real emotion is just taken out of this film, and to say it deals with death, and like moving on, I don't know. I feel like that's a bit of a crime. Yeah, you know. You, yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure um, why this film is getting so much praise. No, I mean, and it's getting a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's got me really confused, and I think you know maybe maybe there'll be a moment where you know I talk to someone who just loves this movie and they break it down in a different way. Yeah, and then you know maybe there's maybe I'll be able to see more there. Yeah, you know, and, and and enjoy more. Not to say that there's nothing there to enjoy. Oh even no, it's, now. it's beautiful I mean, there, to look at. Yeah, there there are some great things about this movie, but just I think because you know the things that we're talking about the pacing and the the way that the characters are handled um it just it it ruins the rest of the movie at least for you and me yeah you know um but yeah i mean it, it is beautiful like there are some amazing shots in this movie like the shot of them the the two characters when they're driving in the car and they're like holding the cigarettes out of the oh yeah yeah the uh top of the sunroof, car yeah the sunroof yeah um that was really cool um i know there's some other shots here i really I like I when they were sitting by the water and he was like standing and she was sitting and the angle it kind of had all the concrete and then the water in the background and they were like yeah. in that conversation that was really good yeah um, there was some really and like especially because it's like so far back i think yeah. you yeah. know the shot is so far back and high up they do they do shots like that that um were really interesting as far as like the, I, I don't know who came up with or who who decided how they decided to put a you know where to put the camera but they put it in places that you don't normally see yeah but work work really well yeah um which is really cool the but the problem is that they just stay for too long it's like it's almost like I had this thought that maybe the director was like, you know how hard it was to get the shot, show the whole shot yeah, in the movie, yeah. <laughs> like don't cut any of it, yeah. and and th so the shots just stay for too long, and it's yeah. just 
It's like the smoking in the car scene. Like they come out and it looks incredible. It's like shot from behind. Then a hand goes down, they take another drag, and then it cuts and it's the front of the car. And then like it just it just kept going. I yeah. It just like it was just on and on and on. Yeah. Um, and a lot of those like a lot of the scenes had that like when they're actually doing the play at the end, I was like like we get come on, like let's get to the end. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Because that end, yeah, that last monologue seemed to go on forever. Yeah, and it's like with a lot of these uh, Oscar movies, I feel like, or you know, not even just not even just the Oscar movies, but a lot of movies these days, I feel like people, well, filmmakers aren't, or maybe producers, I don't know who who it is that's making these decisions. And, and choosing these scripts, but it seems like making a movie entertaining is like the last thought. Yeah. Like, as long as it's got a good actor or got good cinematography or, you know, looks, you know, is completed, it's like, we're just going to put it on streaming, you know, Netflix yeah. will buy it or whatever. Yeah. And making a movie entertaining is the last thing on their mind it's like no this is the entertainment business like entertaining is the first thing it needs to be is really the only thing it needs to be yeah um and i don't know if maybe like i i have a feeling that it's because of streaming because because movies don't really have to bring in audiences like they used to exactly they can they can make they can make their money in other ways and yeah. it's it's just kind of sad yeah, it is <laughs> yeah i mean one thing i read after i watched it that kind of i don't know changed it a little bit was the fact that it's set in hiroshima is pretty important they said that um as hiroshima was pretty much like destroyed by the war and then built back up again they were like that's kind of what these characters are going through and I was yeah. like, "Well, that's that's inter- that's interesting to think." About yeah, I, well, like I did have the thought, not not really making the connections between you know the 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 subject matter of the film and that, but I did have the thought of like, "Oh, it's cool. It is cool to see Hiroshima like yeah. shot shot in this way because you know when you think of Hiroshima, all you think about is rubble, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, um, and." I can only think of one film that I've seen that takes place in Hiroshima, but it is, um, it is like soon after, or I don't know how soon after Hir- Hiroshima Mon Amour I've seen. Yeah. And I guess it's not, you know, totally rubble, but, um, I mean, the opening shot of that film is like two characters embracing covered in ash so yeah. it's like bring, bringing to mind, you know, the the war and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it it is it is cool to see the the city that way. Yeah. And, yeah and, in a different light that doesn't, you know, that's not about the war or whatever. But yeah. but I guess it it kind of is, in some ways, still about death and you know yeah. trying to move on after tragedy. Um, yeah, but yeah, um, I think I think like you were saying, like it, it, you know, the 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 moment at the end where these characters are opening up and and um, deciding to go on with their lives, I just wasn't invested in these now, characters. You know, yeah, you, by the you, time that you, revelation comes, like I I felt so like bored by what I'd yeah. already seen and I just didn't really care. And they are like quite good revelations. Like I like the fact that our main guy kind of talks about the fact that she wanted him to come home to have a talk and he put it off. He was like, I'm not, you know, he drove around, you know, until like late at night when he came home and she had already died. Um, I was like, well, that is interesting, but I'm like, I don't really care anymore. Yeah, it's like the kid, you're not invested in that character. You're no, not really exactly. You're not really wanting you're not invested in wanting him to get better. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. It's not you don't feel 
the depth yeah. of that character, you know, exactly the way yeah. that he does. Because a lot of, I mean, with cinema, you're supposed to kind of connect with the characters. You're supposed to kind of, you know, even though you aren't the character, you're supposed to identify with them and go through this emotional ride with them. But like the the, you know, there was never that moment where you connected. No, everyone played it so placid. Like I said before, it was just every conversation could have been done in monotone because there was just no real emotion there. You know, whenever yeah. there was a revelation, it was always part of like a, a huge monologue. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it just, I don't know. There was just not enough emotion in it to keep me entertained. I think that's yeah. what it boils down to. Yeah. I feel the same. I knew we were in trouble when at the beginning he drives to the airport. He arrives at the airport, gets a text message that the plane is cancelled for the next day, and then drives home. And that whole scene takes about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. I was like, oh, dear. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> why Why do we need to see all of this? You're not. There's nothing being added. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. There, there's nothing being added to the depth, to the story, to anything. We're just sitting, waiting for something. Yeah. I mean, even, like, I understand that the whole thing with glycoma is that's why he needs a driver. Like, they obviously know about it and they've arranged it for him. Um, but still, that whole scene, I was like, okay, like, this is a big emotional moment. Nope. They both sit there, yeah. like, nothing's really happened. They get back, they have sex. She tells a story. That's the end. Yeah. It's, yeah. And that, I don't know. And I didn't really like, was it Otto, the wife? Uh huh. I think like, so. Yeah. I mean, I didn't really get that side of the story where she, she has sex and when she orgasms, she tells a story which she instantly apparently forgets and has to have him remember. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, like I said, like it's based on a short story. So like I feel that the short story is where this story works. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it doesn't work as a three hour film. I just don't us. I, I just don't get why it was three hours. I just can't fathom, you know, why they made that decision for it to be that that long. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, it, it. Yeah, like we've already said, it could have very easily. It could have very easily been two hours. Yeah, I mean, just just by cutting out the the fat, you know, just trimming it up. I think of the reactions I had to other films, um, mainly nominated for best international film, and like the head and shoulder, like Flea, for example was such a more interesting watch to me and a film that I want to go back and revisit. Um, same with yeah. Worst Person in the World. I just don't understand. Like, I really want, I, I would really love someone that's already seen the film that's listening to let us know kind of what they loved about this movie. Cause about I, like, driving my car? Yeah, because I, I, yeah. I want to see it through someone else's eyes. I want to, I was hoping that like we would have different opinions. Um, yeah. Because I want to get what the hype is about yeah but if I, I just think if this had not been nominated for an oscar and i just walked into the cinema and i'd sat down and watched this film i would have been like that was awful yeah <laughs> like and, like you know and a part of me was like okay there must be something in here as to why it's so highly lauded like there must be something that i'm not getting but i just yeah. don't know what it is yeah uh, awful Same. is a strong word i don't know if it's awful um because parts of it yeah, were really, really beautiful. Um, yeah, there, I mean, there's still stuff to enjoy. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it well, wasn't the worst. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the worst movie we've ever seen. But no, um, I think just as a whole, it, you know, by the end of it, you're just confused. Yeah, and, I mean, for us anyway. You know, obviously, like we said, there's there's still people who love this movie. I mean, it's nominated for best picture. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the biggest issue I think I have is just that number one thing that a movie is supposed to be, which is entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Engaging, you know, um, 
relatable in some ways. You've got to relate to the characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, hopefully, I mean, if, if, if something does change for Lewis and I, we will uh, mention it in a future podcast and, yeah. and talk about, you know, at least do a little blurb about what changed about this movie for us. Yeah, and I'm definitely right. going to try and watch it again. I mean, not any anytime soon, um, but in the future, it's like I do want to watch it again just to see if if I've changed at all. But yeah, I don't... There's not a lot in here for me to get excited about. Well, next week, we're doing our Oscar special. Yes. And it's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. it's just going to be Lewis and I hanging out and basically going through all, everything that's been nominated and we're going to uh, predict what we think is going to win or you know what we want to win yeah exactly and, um, I feel like we should do an official film church radio prediction and then at Lewis and Brandon like dream pick like who we'd want to win okay cool yeah we can do that because often the people I want to win and not the people who I think are going to win. Yeah, for sure. But that's next week. And um, and I am really excited to kind of to talk about these films and see if we're right or not. Because the Oscars have thrown up some very interested choices yeah. in the last few yeah. years. So, Yeah, I almost feel like with this film, with Drive My Car, that... Uh, that the the people in the Academy were told critics really like this movie and yeah, you should nominate it because critics think it's good. Yeah. And we need an international film in there. (laughs) Yeah. Which Uh, is part of the, I mean like not to kind of do any like disservice at all, but you do feel like it is the token international picture you know yeah so i don't know mind boggling yeah but we'll talk about this next week i'm sure we'll mention i mean it. it's got uh on on rotten tomatoes it's got a 97 percent critics uh rating and yeah. 79 yeah. audience score yeah, so you can see a little bit of the difference between what critics think and what like the average punter would say. Yeah, you know, um, I just yeah, I'm just I don't know. <laughs> We're both just like what? <laughs> I know. Yeah, I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> uh, um. If you do love this movie, please don't hate us. Yeah, uh, I mean... Just let us know why. Let us know yeah, why you please. love it. Yeah, like, we are very open to having discussions about it um, and also to having our mind change. Like, if there is something that you've, like, overlooked that could change this movie for us, we want to hear what it is. You know, I want to understand this movie better. Yeah. But at this moment in time, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> well Any, anything else you want to say about drive by car brandon i don't think so man i mean i think um i think that's it like there's you know i've already said it but there's there's still stuff there to enjoy yeah but i think we'll um yeah we'll see what happens next week and if it'll make more sense yeah after the oscars are over yeah sometimes i think that you just need to let a film sit with you for a while you know, That's on, re- true. Yeah. on reflection, sometimes films are better than they are in the moment. Yeah. So, yeah. but we'll see, you know, um, which does bring us to the end of the show. So thank you all so much for listening. Um, you can find the show on Twitter and Instagram at Film Church Radio, and you can follow us individually on Letterboxd. Brandon is at Selman Scope, and I am at Walker Lewis 3007 uh, to keep up with what we've been watching. Um I've been, I'm getting so close to averaging a film a day again. Oh, nice. Which is really scary. I keep yeah. kind of doing the math and I'm like 10 off. Um, so yeah, it just shows that I have a lot more free time now I've changed my job. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
we also have all our back episodes streaming on all good podcast platforms, including um, a show on Pink Flamingos, which was just announced that it's getting a Criterion release later in the year. Yeah. So if you want to prepare for that by going to listen to the show, that would be great. We also have a Spider-Man um, No Way Home spoiler special, as that is now out on streaming. So if you're going to revisit that, give us a listen. See if you agree with what we have to say. Um, and if you do, leave us a rating and review so we know if you like the film. Um, and please, like, if you disagree with anything we say or if you agree with it, let us know. We want to know what you think about films. You know, this is, like we said, this is a church. We want um, contribution from all that listen. So please let us know. But yeah, um, like we said, next week, Oscar special. It's finally upon us. Um, so tune in on Oscar Sunday um, to hear me and Brandon talk about the films that we want to win, the films we think will win, and our overall feeling to the most prestigious awards in the film industry. Well, I think that's I think that's it, Brandon. I think that's us at the end. Those who survive keep thinking about the dead in one way or another. That will continue. You and I must keep living like that. We must keep on living. It'll be okay. I'm sure we'll be okay. Kandar. <laughs> that quote is from Drive My Car, but I feel like it's more fitting to Evil Dead. And the fact we're going to go see Evil Dead 2 next week. So I'm sure we'll be okay, Ash. <laughs> I was trying to do the Evil Dead radio <laughs> voice, you know, when they're listening to the tape. Yeah, yeah could have been could have been in there with it <laughs> <laughs> all right y'all well have a good week we'll see you next week <laughs> I'll, yeah i'll get my tux ready for our oscar special <laughs> you'll get your what my tux oh sweet yeah yeah i've I got a print one. i've got a printed tux t <laughs> nice yeah we'll be ready <laughs> all right y'all have a good week bye guys bye